Okay. I don't want to do right. the intro, but I guess I'm doing it now. Yep, Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, so this is Tangent Tuesday with Games Academy, and everybody's going on about Irish potatoes already. Uh, what? Apparently, I promise you uh, uh, Irish potatoes? I don't, I don't remember promising any potatoes. Um, are you trying to derail what I was going to talk about with potatoes in the first two minutes? Sorry, first ten seconds, even. Uh... I mean, who actually Irish wants potatoes? See, potatoes. Iris and Irish. Okay, you're gonna correct it. Um, okay, so no, what I actually wanted to talk about first, and I was gonna let Ethan talk about this uh, initially, was today is the anniversary you said of. Um, it's the, the, it's the demotion day of Pluto. Today okay. is the. Uh, it was in 2000 and, 2006. So Six, however okay. many, what what year was? How many years ago was that? Hold back to quick math. Uh, 2006 would be 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So today is the 15th anniversary of Pluto no longer being a planet. Which actually now, is now I don't know if you guys did you guys learn any um uh what's it called mnemonics the way you uh, a bunch of different words that c come together to help you memorize. Stuff. You and I probably learned the same one. But yes, I'm we learned the same one. If, if but anyone did, in chat learned any. Yeah, ways to remember the planets hours. in order. Because I can't use the one I used to use because it includes Pluto. Yeah. Well, the, the, there's a simple alteration to it to make it Pluto, but it's but it's less but it doesn't, less fattening. It doesn't uh, sound... Yeah. Um, it, the, the one that we always used to use was my very energetic mother just served us nine pancakes. Mm-hmm. And the and the, uh, the the less fattening version is just served us nachos. Uh, yeah, no. So my is Mercury, very mm -hmm. Venus, energetic Earth. Uh, mother is is Mars. Mm -hmm. Just is Jupiter. Served is Saturn. Us is Uranus. Um, nine, nine is Neptune. Neptune. And pancakes is Pluto, but you can't mm -hmm. do that anymore because Pluto is no longer a planet. But let's face it, nachos taste better than, than pancakes anyway. I hate nachos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we also hate pancakes, so still. No, pancakes can be good. Uh, yeah. This, this is not a very educational topic unless we want no, to discuss the history of pancakes, which I know nothing about. Although we could same. talk about Pancake Day. Yes, but that's. We we should save that for when there's a Tangent Tuesday near near Pancake Day rather yeah. than now. Sorry, now other... that you guys are gonna have to wait uh, eight months. Mm. Wait, no, no, it's only it's no, it's six months. I think. No. Let me let me double check. Um, I'm pretty sure. So is that an actual day? It's maple syrup. Uh, ma so Ty saying maple syrup day, please. Is that an actual day? Uh, probably. There, there's a day for, I mean, there's a day for everything, everything and, and they tend to overlap a lot. Um, so, my loose understanding of why Pluto got demoted um, is basically when when you're, when you're looking at the, at the planets, we were redefining the way that we define a planet. Um, and there are, I believe, two or three other objects that we found in our solar system of a similar size to Pluto. Yeah, but they, um, they they weren't considered planets. So, Pluto became classified with them as a planetoid rather than a full fledged planet. Um, and let me see. Yeah, Cherry's Cherry's Cherry got the right planet idea. Planetoid versus a planet. Uh, technically, according to the de uh, actual definition, Pluto is considered a dwarf planet. Planetoids are small celestial bodies that orbit the sun. Uh, actually, yeah, because. So, so one of the other dwarf planets out there is Ceres, which was which was discovered in 1801. Um, yeah, but they, they yeah. So Pluto. So in 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 2006, I think that they, they, they reclassified planetoids as well and created a, a new class called dwarf planet for things like Ceres, and then they, and then they put Pluto in that same category. Um, I think. Some of the factors involved in it have to do with both size and orbital, um, like how how in line with the orbital plane it is. I think Pluto's a bit too um, angled compared to other planets. Yeah, I. But, I mean, if we 
if we're talking about the planet, hold up. Some ties got a. I don't want to read that. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Uh, That's a big wall no, of text. Yeah, but specifically, it's a dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, which which, which does make it a little bit harder to call it a planet because the the Kuiper Belt's got a lot of rocks in it. Um. Uh, exoplanets. Yes, yeah, so if you're talking about about exoplanets, that's that that's just a fancy name for planets that are star so far away we can't see them directly. Yeah. Because they're yeah other stars. <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything other than mysterious planet, I think. Or exo. Does does, does exo as as a root mean like alien? Uh, exo. I should we're gonna be looking at Latin. Yeah. No, no, exo means outside, outer, or external. It, so it, it, oh, it, it exo, exoskeleton, obviously. Yeah, water, exoskeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so as a root, exoplanet just means planets outside of our, of our solar system, quite literally. Yeah. What show are we talking about in chat here? They were talking about Magic School Bus. Ah. Ah, uh, okay, so we need a... If we're not going down the astronomy path today, no, what what's our tangent? Well... There's the other, the other anniversary. That's the anniversary of us move, moving to the US uh, into 2004, I believe. So 21 years ago. Oh no. Okay, uh, Actually, that's that's good. That's some good I, quality math. I did math. math, and then I didn't do math. That's some um, good quality math. It's 17 years ago. 17 years ago. Um, so is there anything in interesting to talk about? What, what what's involved going from England to US? You actually okay. So differences between England and and the US, which is what Salty's asking. Okay, that's something um, to talk about. Well, one, if we're talking about the major differences, uh, we mentioned this before with how uh, American, Southern American, uh, or Southern American accent is he is theorized to be heavily based on original English accent. Or but, not, not based on, but closest to. Yeah, because closest Because it changed to. the least. Um, the ing for, well, oh, there's obviously a lot of simple words that get changed. So, mm -hmm. garage, garage, um, just different pronunciations of words. Uh, yeah, that's, so... that's more uh, where you put the emphasis. Um, I think everybody knows about chips versus um, versus fries. Yeah, chips versus fries, or and um, crisps versus American chips. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think less known word changes would be uh, like uh, uh, bonnet and hood. Bonnet and hood for car. Um, yeah, and boot and trunk as yeah. well. Um, so on a car, you've got the bonnet and the tr and the boot, uh, um, which are the same for the U.S. as the hood of the trunk. Yeah, um, okay. I have no idea why why those are the terms, but yeah, you you the the boot is in the back and the and the bonnet's on the front. Um, well, th th there was another one as well. Oh, uh, well, you also have different. Ketchup. Uh, yeah, ke well, no. That, I think we it's my... couldn't order ketchup because we call it just 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 tomato sauce. Yeah, it's tomato sauce. It's not ketchup. It's it's not ketchup. Although so... it's tomato sauce, but a lot of places just ended up if we're just calling, calling it, it just generic yeah. sauce, which is yeah, sauce. It, if you ask for sauce, they assume sauce. you wanted ketchup. Mm -hmm. But so when you go into a restaurant and ask for some sauce, they go, "What?" <laughs> Actually, other thing, because someone mentioned a cat in chat. Super, mm -hmm. If you're talking about superstitions on England stuff, black cats in England are considered lucky. Are they? I thought. I, I think I thought the black cats thought, were considered lucky. Hold up. I thought I thought that was an Asian thing. Hold up. Black cats lucky. I thought I thought was Asian, not English. Oh, let me see. I might be mistaken on this. Um. Lucky where? This is this is this is not. How uh, according to yeah, in in Japan, they're lucky. Apparently, uh, apparently no. According to this uh, Google thing, uh, in the rest of Britain, a black cat beside well, besides Scotland, in the rest of Britain, a black cat crossing your path is considered good luck. The same goes for Japan. Okay. So yeah, so 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 black cats are lucky in England and Japan, not unlucky. No, in England, black cats are lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, they they they're considered lucky. Uh, they're considered lucky. Now this this might just be our grandmother, but I'm pretty sure green cars are unlucky. I don't know. That's a lot of. They're... We're not going into every superstition that's in no, between but, England. But but she wouldn't buy a green car because they're unlucky. Well, green cars are ugly anyway, so who cares? Yeah, there's that too. Um. 
Uh, I know in England, it, another thing is you usually be, you usually start like school a year earlier well. as well. You start the first year of school is, is age four, not age five. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you got that too. Um, I do not know enough about the the, uh, the university system though to compare them, but they are quite different. I do know that the way that testing done in the UK is generally very different than the US. UK that, test. Ethan, UK... That, that might be testing from from 30 years ago versus now rather than English that's America. true that's true we can't go into too much detail because we haven't been there in 15 years mm-hmm. or 17 years so we can't talk about the difference in testing because that could have changed over 17 years no idea well, Malcolm saying green cars are the most uncommon car colour it depends on the shade of green I actually don't mind a dark green car but if you've got a lime green car that's a little bit ridiculous uh, we're to- I mean if we're talking about green stuff from doing we had this discussion on the server a while ago eye colours right Pure mm-hmm. green eyes are actually quite rare. Like I believe, right. the, I believe the, the statistic of it was pure green eyes are two percent of the po- of the world population. Mm-hmm. Which, when you compare um, that to having blue eyes being like ten, but with almost all of that being centralized around Switzerland and Germany, though that area of Europe. Uh, hazel eyes are like, I think it goes like green, grey, hazel, blue, brown, and then I'm not talking about any of the really abnormal, the abnormal, the major so, abnormalities. Did you just li- just list hazel in the, in that list when we talked about hazel a few days ago? Hazel is technically cate- categorized as an eye color with six percent of the population having it. So the problem with Hazel, as Ethan and I had talked about a few days ago separately from this, is Hazel is, when you look at it, you didn't fit in any of the other categories. If, you're, if your eyes aren't brown, aren't green, aren't blue, they're Hazel. Even if it's some weird mixture of green, blue, and brown. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know about Amber. I didn't see that. Um... But also... Dasem just DM'd me uh, a link about screen cars. Apparently, it started in 1910. There was a, uh, a, a an accident in a race that killed both the driver and several bystanders, I think. So, or or it, it might have just been bystanders. Then 10 years later, there was a second accident in racing, which is said to have, have involved a green car. So green race cars are now considered unlucky. Um, but I'm not sure about road cars. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know about diff. I know if we're not talk- I know most eye colors are. They're, you can. They're not that uncommon. The main uncommon ones you get are the uh, genetic. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anomalies. That's the word. Like uh, heter- heterochromia. That's yep. incredibly rare. And 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 again, let's let's break down that word in what the roots mean. So hetero means not the same. Yeah. And chromia is color. So yeah. it, it, if you break words down that way, you can figure out that heterochromia is not the same color. So it's it, 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 it's ununiform color. Yeah. Uh, the thing with heterochromia and hazel eyes is uh, a lot of heterochromia and hazel eyes are not the same thing. Hazel eyes often, you can have multiple colors in your eyes of hazel. Heterochromia is like, oftentimes, I think, from my research, it's like when half of the eye is one color and half of the eye is the other. They're very distinct. Not that there's a pattern so, of, of color in your eye. Well, if you, if, if you again take it as heterochromia, that is going to be in contrast to homochromia, which means the uniform. So even if, if the color itself is not necessarily a single color, if it's uniform around the eye, then it's homochromia, not heterochromia. Yeah. Um, like, my, uh, my eyes are hazel. Two eyes are different? Yeah. Uh, no, so you can have... There's two types of heterochromia. There's... Mm-hmm. Uh, your eyes are two dis- separate, distinct colors mm-hmm. from each other. And then your eyes... They, then you have, like, one eye, which is green on the top and, like, blue on the bottom. Yeah, so there's there's... Heterochromia as it uh, 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 in the form of I have two different eyeballs, mm-hmm. effectively. I've got a blue eye and a green eye, and there's just my eye parts somewhere in the eye where it changes color. Yeah, the the thing with that though is like a lot of hit... left, right, top, down. Or like, something like that's that. that's not the same for like hazel eyes though, because hazel eyes are like my eyes for example. They have a green outer ring, 
and a brown inner ring. That's not heterochromia. That's yeah, just hazel. But, but that's that's like a uniform. Um, uh, what's the, what's the term in graphics when it when it goes slowly from from one color to a different color? Uh, the, a fade or a transition is. Well. Yeah. So so that's. A gradient is yeah. A gradient is another. We, that's a good word. Yeah. A, for it. A, a a a hazel eye is yeah. It it's basically got a gradient or a fade to it rather than a sudden transition. Um, and the fade is consistent across the eye. Yeah. So, and and I think also hazel tends to be more circular in terms of in terms of its shading. Because it's again inner ring, outer ring, more so than left side, right side. Yeah, the, uh, hazel might be partially heterochromatic, but people don't consider heterochromia, from my mm. understanding. Because yeah. it's probably common enough that um, that it might be in it might you have similar genetic aspects of heterochromia, but it's it's again six it's five not six rare of, enough to be considered special. Yeah, five six percent of the population have it. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we're talking about other rare things that people have, left-handedness, being left-handed, I think that's, yeah, I think that's like see, 9%, 9% wonder... of people are lefties. Mm -hmm. It depends on where you get your numbers. Yeah, and it also, it also makes me wonder how much of that is accurate. Okay, so how like... many people listening here are lefties? I need to know. Yeah, we have 12 currently listening. We have two, two lefties. Dasim is basically saying that he's both. Ambide uh, that's ambidextrous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mother is is ambidextrous. Uh, I'm I'm lefty. I know. As well. I'm lefty, but um, the thing I've noticed about most lefties I talk to is they are usually far more ambidextrous than um, people who are right-handed. Yeah, and, and and that was what I was going to say in terms of lefty versus righty. I'm not sure we have accurate information on that typically, because since most of the world is built for right-handedness. A loosely left-handed person can be trained to be basically just a right-handed person from exposure. Yeah, so, so like makes for me, me wonder... yeah. yeah, no, go on. Well, it just, it just makes me wonder how much of left-handedness versus right-handedness is a product of environment rather than actual physical differences in the person. Well, there is definitely some physical aspect because otherwise there would be no left-handed people in general. Because I mm -hmm. grew up with everyone teaching me how to do right-handed, but I still gravitated towards left-handedness. Except that one time I remember like. 12 years ago when Alex had you holding the mouse in your left hand for some reason. Uh, I see. Yeah, you, you say that, but I still hold, I hold the mouse in my right hand to this day. Yeah, but I, I just, I remember thinking it really interesting that, that, that you were being told to use left-handed mouse for like this one game once. No. Um, I, I think that there is, I don't think it's all just environment, mm -hmm. but you can teach yourself to use your right yeah. hand, which is why I would say so, left-handed people generally have better control of the right hand than a right-handed person has over the left. That's that is fair, um, but it's 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 going to depend on what you do and such. Like my 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 left hand's plenty good at typing, but it's terrible with a pencil. Um, um and actually, I'm very bad at typing with with the right hand. I do a lot more keys with with the left hand than the right hand. Uh, I can actually use um, my left hand decently well for a keyboard or for a mouse. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not what I'm comfortable with, but I can do it all right. Yeah, no, there's, there, there, there's no way I, I could do a left-handed mouse. It would be so so inaccurate. Uh, it would probably take me a, about a week to get uh, super comfortable with it. But I use left-handed mouse often. Like if I'm doing something with my right hand, like reading a book, um, like when I'm doing my when I'm studying, I'll read with my uh, I'll have the book in my right hand, and if I'm like changing a song, I'll use my left hand to do it with my mouse without any problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll I'll do stuff like that myself like I'll, I'll reach over and i'll use a laptop trackpad with the left hand because it's the it's the only one that i can reach with but i'll but I'll, i will favor the right in most cases okay if since we're talking about computer stuff and typing actually interesting discussion why are letters typed uh like why is it why are they called uppercase and lowercase letters does, it, does anybody in the chat want, want to try and answer that? Yeah, does, anyone, does anyone in the chat want to try and answer why it's called an upper or lowercase letter? And then I'll read it out it's loud like, what you say. Okay, oh, you did? Okay, Sokka says learned that she today. learned it today. Yeah, okay. Okay, Sokka, go ahead. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see what your answer is. Because I learned about this a while ago and I found it super interesting. I learned it in a, in yeah, a, in a typography class. We have talked about it several times. It was in a typography class I was doing. Yeah.
Yep. Yep. Sucker's got yep. That's that, that's correct. Okay. Uh, so reading what uh, what she said. Okay. So uppercase is called that because they use this to store the capital letters in the drawer above the lowercase ones for original printing presses. Yeah. Yeah, that... See now, now, Psycho, you will never forget it because if you if you learn it if you learn it today in history, now you, now you're learning it again, and you're never going to forget that. Other things, actually, um, how, I, I'm being my brain's done. How many letters are considered part of the English language? Twenty six, right? Twenty six. Twenty six. Not that's not how it used to be. There used to be twenty eight. Oh. Uh, and the and symbol was considered a letter for a good period okay. of time. And there was so the, a symbol. The there was another symbol uh, for the th sound, I believe. That was used. Ah, the th- okay. Uh, there was like a th sound um, mm-hmm. for like there was letter four ths. Yeah, the the sound which I haven't yet seen in other languages. Uh, it's definitely not in Japanese. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, a lot of this have actually been dropped over time. I think sh might have been as well. I haven't I haven't looked mm-hmm. into that one though. Um, like there used to be there used to be letters for that. Also, other interesting things. If it's, so, have you ever got? Have you seen? If you see signs or like in old westerns, you see like ye old tavern, ye, uh, in old English just meant the. Mm-hmm. So if you say um, the ye old tavern, you're saying the the old tavern. So if yeah. anyone ever if you ever see the ye, and then they they say like ye old something. They're screwing it up really badly because they're just double saying I, the. I didn't know that, and now it's going to drive me nuts. Just like ATM machine can drive people nuts. Yeah, yeah. If you say ATM, yeah, ATM machine. That's that's one that, that sounds play, so natural. Do we say Z now. or Z, Ethan? Um, I say Z most of the time. Not yeah, Z. I, 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 I also tend to say Z. I remember learning about that. I don't. I know England. I think it's. I think in England it's divided, uh, between north and south. If you say Z or Z. Mm-hmm. You're welcome, Ty. Uh, I have never yeah. heard Czar. Okay, okay. Here. If if we're talking about other old English stuff, um, so this is this is from my Japanese study a little bit. So in Japanese, you've got ko, so, and a. Are you uh, uh, is a very common pattern. So koko, soko, asoko. Or kore sore are, um, and what these are is it's basically this that there kind of thing. So koko is here. Uh, soko is there next 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 to the person that I'm speaking to, and asoko is over there. Okay. So in English we actually had the same structure in in ye olde English because we've got here and there still. But but there is no no more over there word. You, you you just have to say over there, which is basically a place that is different from where the two people talking are. Yeah. But actually, when you hear the word yon in Old English, that's what yon was. Yeah, yonder. Over yonder. Yeah. So you used to have here, yon there, was and yonder. For over there. Yeah, but we've lo- we've lost the use of the word so, yonder, so we're missing one of the ways of pointing out different things. Yeah, so, because we just say over there now. Yeah. So if you were pointing something off in the distance, like let's say you were like talking out in the farm and you were pointing out a mountain in the distance, you would say the ma- the mountain yonder there or something like like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not entirely sh- entirely sure the the way it was used, but yeah, you you've got this this like yonder form in in the old English, which I'm pretty sure is is the over there form that you see in other languages. Yeah. Um, I mean, do we want to get into the language discussion? Is that what we're doing right now? I mean, yeah, we, we're already there. It's called tangent. <laughs> it's called a tangent. Um, but if I continue the um, koko, soko, asoko, there's also one more form in Japanese, which is doko. Um, so in English, you may have noticed when you ask a question, it tends to have a W to start with, and the answer starts with T. So where, there, what, that when then and it and it kind of matches um japanese is, is, is actually the same um so doko is where soko or koko is there or here okay, but that's not not the same starting sound though between those no but it's 
it's the same thing in terms of you 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 just change the 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 starting sound in Japanese it's the do start okay and so you you kind of got that and it's it's not true for all question words but it, it if you think through the various English ones it's it's true for most of them uh, the 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 one which comes to mind that it isn't true for is how yeah how is the main question word that is not um, who what where when and why but I think uh, it's the same no I'm not entirely sure what how is in Japanese um, like there are there are some weird questions like like doshio which i think is what should i do um and you've got the various nanny forms so nano or or, or, or nanio might be the closest to how or what but uh i can't read that it's at like all. shouting dono dono yoni i'm not familiar with that particular word uh, okay, but you um, sitting, are you put, have you put something in front of your face for the microphone? Because like you're a lot quieter. Is that better? No. I had a weird computer bug out a second ago. Let me let me just try something. Technical difficulties. I don't know where to go for the rest of that song. Uh, uh, is, is is that fixed? Uh sort of. It still sounds a little weird, but we can we can run with it. Let me just. Uh... I'll just have to my, adjust your volume on Discord. Slightly. And then came back up, so I guess it was doing some reset. It, it, it's, it'll, it'll have to do. Pull my chat back up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just adjust your volume slightly to get it to where So, it yeah, Shadi, where'd you get that form? Was that just from, from Google Translate? We, You need to be really careful no, no, Yoni. about hmm? trusting any form of Google Translate. Because... Oh. Again, Google Translate, it tries to bring the meaning across, but the fact of the matter is it's, it's very difficult for a computer program to accurately yeah. trans- transition between one language to the other. It's not, well, even, it's not it's, even Google yeah. Translate's fault in most cases. Like, yeah, you it, can use Google Translate for individual words, kind of. Um, one of the problems that you have is that there are words that just don't exist in other languages. Yeah. Now... An interesting one. I've forgotten what the exact word was because I've only heard it a couple of times and I do not know how to pronounce it correctly. But there is a word in Japanese that basically means reverse angry. There is no such word in English. But what the word is used for is... No, reverse if angry. You, yeah, so if you essentially are telling someone off because they were doing something wrong and then and then they get mad at you but they're the one... They're the person who was wrong in the first place. It's being reverse angry, or 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 th- this this Japanese word. You you're angry because you're the one who was wrong. And so that that yeah yeah it's it, it it's basically like like lashing out because you're wrong. Yeah, but, um, but there's not but so, really a word for it in English. You have to try yeah, and describe but, a bunch of other words. But in Japanese, there is a word that specifically means that. Yeah. So that's the problem you have with Google um, Translate. Because if you throw that, if mm-hmm. you throw that word into Google Translate, what is it supposed to tell you to do? Mm-hmm. Like, what, yeah. like what is Google Translate going to say back to you? You throw a word and it gives you an entire sentence back, saying, mm-hmm. "Oh yeah, this word basically means that." Oh yeah, you right, are reverse right. angry at someone, or whatever. That, yeah, I mean, what was the other word? Uh, it's hazure is a word that I've been learning recently as well. Um, and when you're dealing with Hazure, the the English description that I've had for the word is it basically means edge, but it's got like 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 edge outside um, skin as far as far as different Eng- different Eng- English words that it ties to. And the connection that I've been able to form as learning the word is I'm pretty sure Hazure basically means the edge of something. So the and, and like l- like the the outermost edge of something. So the edge of the universe, the edge of your body, the edge of the table, that sort of thing. Yeah. So the the edge of of your body is going to be your skin, and that and that kind of concept. Yeah. There's a lot of what like there's a lot of words that go back that way and can't go like they can only go one way, or mm-hmm. don't make sense in the other language. Like another word that uh, Kay was talking to me about earlier, mm-hmm. that in English makes complete sense, but makes it's very confusing for a Japanese person, is the word put. Mm-hmm. 
put that is not there's not it's not easily translate over into Japanese. They can't say stuff easily with like put they there's not an easy word that equals well, it's, put. It's it's mostly because depending on context, put means like twelve different things. Exactly, yeah. You're gonna put on a jacket, you're gonna put down a, a cup, you're going to put up a fight. Like like there's there's a fight. whole different different ways of, of of using put that don't fit. And so the, there are words like this which which they all carry a similar meaning. Like us as native English speakers, there is something in all those forms of put which which link and make sense together. But that only makes sense in the context of the English language. Yeah. There are other Japanese words that mean a whole bunch of different things that don't really make sense as to how uh, 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 or for, for us as English speakers if we're given all the different ways that word is used they seem kind of unrelated but to a Japanese person there is some underlying meaning that ties all those things together Okay, I, um, I, and I, I haven't to, got a I good example of it off, second, off the top of my head yeah I'm there people in the chat are attacking linguist uh, English has been a linguistic crime um mm -hmm. The, okay, are. I know that ling that English is confusing. There's a rule, there's exceptions, yes, but there's a reason for it. It's not all just because it's a dumb language. There's a reason why there's exceptions to the rule, and it's called cool, and it's called look at every single nation that invaded England from like the 10th century onwards, mm -hmm. and you can find where all those exceptions come from. Um. Like okay. most most languages tend to learn English as a second language because it's the the official language of business. Yeah, if you want to learn a language to do business around the world, you can just assume that most people are going to know English. Yeah, I I understand that it's messed up, Cherry. That the, that the language isn't great, but most languages have history that makes no sense. That I mean, like look at Japanese because Kev's the one who knows a lot about that. People would say that having characters that mean individual words makes no sense. But that's how it's been for hundreds oh, of I years. Oh, I can I can rant about kanji kanji in a minute if you want. Yeah, like people like kanji, you have to learn like five thousand different kanji. Okay, it's more like two thousand. Two thousand or six thousand, depending on what you're trying to memorize. Yeah, but instead of learning letters and doing that, you have to learn kanji for each individual word. That sounds confusing and annoying, but that's just because of the history of the language. Yeah. So, so yeah. if. If you're finished with your English soapbox, I can give a quick rundown of, of why kanji's a mess. Okay, well, before we get to kanji, we have to, we have to talk about the three Japanese scripts. Okay, so Japanese has got three scripts in, in the way that they write. Um, and I know a little bit of their history, but don't quote me if I get some of them wrong. Um, so I believe the first one would be hiragana that I can talk about. So... In Japanese, you've got effectively kanji, hiragana, and katakana. Uh, and these these second two, the katakana and the hiragana, are groups together as what's called the kana. Um, and the kana in Japanese are effectively an alphabet similar to our English alphabet. Not quite though. So they are actually um, it's a it's a phonetic alphabet. So I, I believe the technical term for it is a syllabary. Um, so, all the different sounds in the Japanese language have a symbol in uh, 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 in katakana and in hiragana. Just like how Ethan was saying before, English used to have letters for the th and the sh sounds, but now we don't. Um, Japanese has has symbols for their different sounds. Um, as I've been learning to read it, they do still merge together a bit, like in English. Um, but generally, they are follow a very, very rigid set of rules that don't get violated nearly as much as in Japanese or, 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 or as in English. Um, if you know, if you think about ways that English words violate rules of pronunciation, just just look at read and read. They're spelled exactly the same way, but they're read completely differently. Um, in Japanese, you don't have that. If you've if, if you've got it, got it written in hiragana or katakana, there's generally only one way one way to read that. Uh, okay. um, Can you answer this all are there soft and hard sounds for letters like in English? I don't believe so. Um, they they do have uh, uh, some some intonation, but Japanese is, is often described as being flat because um, the the in, the intonation, while it does 
affect your accent it doesn't affect the meaning of the word um so in terms of their syllabi katakana and hiragana have i think it was 46 base characters plus dakutan and combinations um so if i look up uh, uh, uh hiragana number of characters let's see what it gives me uh, it's okay so so it, so it's 46 basic characters and 71 with diacritics um so just just to use a few examples and i can't sh i can't show pictures to the chat unfortunately um but when you've got say the symbol for ka if you add a diacritic to it it becomes ga uh so so the k becomes a g ka becomes ga most of the Japanese syllabary characters um, are a consonant and a vowel. They 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 don't have any single co consonant except n, which is the n sound. Otherwise, it's n plus a. So so na, ne, no, um, ni. They are all a consonant plus a vowel, which is why you'll often when you hear a Japanese person say an English word, they'll often see like. Um, uh, toileto rather than toilet they will add that 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 extra o to the end because all of their letters have a vowel sound after them yeah it's one so of it, the so it's, things it's kind of unnatural obvious. for them to end on any constant constant that isn't n um and yeah the the chat's still going, going on about red versus read yeah that, 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 that's confusing and that's messing people up all the time um but so with hiragana versus katakana you've got these two syllables um, hiragana is used for native Japanese words. There are some words that are normally written uh, uh, written in hiragana, such as iru, aru, imas, and such. Um, and also, it's used for the ending part of the word. So in English, you've got the ed ending, the ing ending. Um, in Japanese, you've got imas, um, uh, 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 arimasen. Um, and these sort of endings, and those endings are written in the hiragana, usually. Um, katakana can be thought of almost like capitals in English, but it's more akin to italics. Um, so it's all the same sounds, but different symbols. In the same way that lowercase a and capital A, if you didn't know that it was lowercase and uppercase, actually look completely different, uh, uh, completely different from each other. So katakana is basically the capital letters of Japanese, but in practice they're more like italics versus capitals, and yeah. they are used for loan words that they've stolen from other languages, or in the same way that you that that you would use italics for for emphasis. Yeah. So foreign words. So if, mm -hmm. um, what's a good example of a foreign word? Toiletto. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, Toiletto, table, um, dato. All, all of those are, are going to be written in katakana. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, no, in katakana. Hiragana is for the Japanese words. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right yeah. Katakana is for. And then for you have words. the we then you have the weird one, which is kanji. Then you've got kanji, which they which they took from China. Yeah. Um. So Chinese is all kanji. They they haven't got any other scripts. It's purely kanji. Um. Kanji is not a alphabet kanji is a meaning based symbol language um so history wise japan and china got chummy uh not sure exactly when i think it's it, it was it was in the the late hundreds early thousands um and essentially they adopted many of the chinese kanji ca um, characters however they uh, they didn't fully adopt them. They had their own language compared to Chinese, but they took the Chinese writing system. So what makes things confusing with Japanese a little bit is that when you have a kanji, it's got multiple ways that you can read that kanji. You've got the onyomi reading, and you've got the kunyomi reading. The onyomi reading is how the Chinese would read it. And the kunyomi reading is how the Japanese would read it. But But Japanese uses both both readings depending on context um so but to, to add to that even more there might be multiple on yomi readings because essentially they took these chinese words 
over the course of a large amount of time. And one of the things with China is that uh, they went through multiple dy d dynasty changes. And culturally in the area, both in China and Japan, when you change dynasties, you get as far away from the previous from the previous dynasty as you can, to the point where you pick up and move the capital, in, in many cases. Yeah, we could go on to a long history about different yeah. Chinese and Japanese dynasties, but, so but we're not doing that today. They also will just say words differently. And Japan, if one part of Japan learned the way to read the word of that dynasty, and then a different um, a, a, a ambassador from China went to a, to a different part of Japan and taught them the word another way, Japan just now has two different ways of reading that word. Um, but it's not that they have different... Uh, and so you've got, for, for that kanji, there might be three different, different, different ways to read it. I believe the kanji for life has like 10 different readings. Yeah, um, if we want to go into all the different dynasties, Tai... Yeah, we, no, and, we'll and I do not have enough history to go over that. But what this basically boils down to is when you have a kanji, you can often know what it means because kanji have meaning behind them, but you might not know how, it, how to read it because its reading is different based on, on word context. There are some general rules, but then the, but, but there are always words which, which violate those rules. Like every, um, like every language. English is not the only language that has weird rules, guys. <laughs> Don't have to bully also, English so much. My my original kanji rant, which if you talk to people who who have learned Japanese much more than I have, um, one of the issues is that there are multiple different types of kanji. There are the simple ones, which are most of the ones I've been learning, where it's it's pure meaning. You've got uh, let me think of one that's a good example of this. Uh, let me just let me just open up my thing and I will look for a good example that I've learned. Where's my vocabulary? Uh, levels. Level three, vocabulary. Why do you guys want us to talk about Peppa Pig so much? Okay, so this one, for example, uh, shoujo. This is two kanji together, and it's the kanji for small, and it's the kanji for girl. And the way that you read it is shoujo. Sho is small, jo is girl. It's a very, very simple way to read this one, and it's and it's two kanji put together to make a word. So... From, from what I've told you, small and girl, shoujo just means young woman or young girl. It's basically a girl in her teens, like we would say in English, a young lady. And so these kind of kanji are quite easy to understand and learn. But other kanji don't follow that rule. Other kanji, the more complicated one, loosely will be, will be if it's a word with two kanji, the first kanji generally gives you the meaning. So it might be, um, let me just look up. I think it was copper was was one of those um, those ones. But the, the, the kanji for copper, I think the first kanji means something like metal. And the second kanji means has nothing to do with, with, uh, 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 with metal or copper at all. Um, but basically, the first kanji is what it roughly means. And the second kanji is how you say it. Um, so I, 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 I haven't got enough, uh, knowledge on it to tell you what the details were. I think copper is dough, but the first kanji is metal and the second kanji is something that's read as dough effectively. Uh, and so it ends up being like, okay, th there are some rules, but with that one, just memorize it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. How many kanji uh, is it for the uh, JLPT? Um, one Akani stats was what I, was, what I wanted. WK stats. So if I look at the JLPT um, and close that out, none. Yeah, so okay. One of the things when it comes to learning languages is there are levels of language learning. Uh, and for Japanese, they have a standardized test which, which which you can take that will say about how good you are at the language. And th this is the JLPT, the Japanese language, Pro Japanese language proficiency test. And it goes from N5 to N1. So JLPT N5 is the lowest level. You know very, very basic Japanese, but you're not, uh, you aren't going to be able to do much more than get some basic phrases out. 
whereas, whereas JLPT N1 is you are basically fluent. Um, you could go to you could go to Japan, carry a conversation, read the newspaper, and so on. So with kanji, to be a JLPT N5, you only need, need to know 80 kanji. And I currently know, uh, I think, like 50 of them. Um, but to be a JLPT N1, you need 2,000 kanji. And you just kind of have to memorize them. And there are some things that you can use to relate them and such because they are built up of meaning. Um, but ultimately, you just have to have to have learned 2,000 kanji. Yeah, but but it, the nice thing is is that is that you can learn these in a procedural build up way because each kanji is built up of smaller pieces which have meaning. So you can kind of build up meaning from them in many cases. Yeah. The thing that surprises I think a lot of people is when you look up most languages, most mm -hmm. most languages, ninety percent of the language is spoken in only like a, a thousand words or whatever. Yeah, that's that's the thing. There are like six thousand kanji or something like that. But I think 500 kanji make up 80% of written Japanese. Yeah, it's the same with English. Like, you can get through English, 90, 95% of English stuff, but only knowing about 1,000 words. Um, I don't, I need to double... If I, if I sort by, does it show me? No, it does not. Um, it's like, because you have to consider, how often do you, you use so many similar words throughout the day all the time? Mm -hmm. You don't actually introduce that many unique words. Like, when was the last time you used any scientific words in a casual conversation? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Yeah, so like, if you if you want to learn a language and be able to speak it with people, you haven't got to learn the whole language. You've only got to learn, like, the thousand most common words and and how they build build their stuff. And you can probably carry a conversation fairly well. Yeah, exactly. You um, and so it, it, it's all about, like, you know, ha, ha, how deep do you want to go to learn all the words? If you've learned two thousand words in Japanese, and the way they build the, they build their structure, you can read pretty much any Japanese Japanese newspaper and go from there. Uh, yeah. Um, S similarly with English. Um, so it's like it's 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 just down to what you're trying to learn and, and how far you're trying to go. The program that I'm using will teach me all all, all two thousand eventually. Um, and because that's the end goal, it, it's teaching them out of order. It's teaching them based on complexity of, of the kanji rather than um, uh, how often it's used. Um, so like one of the one of the kanji that I've learned that is in the N5 category that's not necessarily very useful is the kanji for arrow. Like, I don't know how often you're, you're, you're ever going to use arrows or swords. I've also learned swords, um, but I but I know what those kanji look like because they're very very simple kanji. Um, and if any and if you're curious, the way that they say arrow is just ya, and um, sword. It, you all already know what sword is in Japanese. It's katana. <laughs> yeah. So like a a a katana is not necessarily just a special sword it just means sword uh, i think they've got a different word for sword as well but it's not like it's um i don't think a katana is necessarily a single a single type of sword it's just it, it's actually a, a, a range of sword types in japan, in japan. Uh, cherry the program that i am using for japanese i'm using several um but for vocabulary kanji i'm using a site called wanikani um, and that is just Japanese. It's it's Japanese kanji specifically. Um, but the other methodology that I'm using for Japanese, it's called uh, TPRS, which is um, I think we talked about this already. But it's uh, teaching proficiency through reading and stories. And so the basic concept is I've got some Japanese manga in Japanese that I'm reading. Um, I've got uh, uh, the the wanakani for learning just pure vocabulary, um, and I'm just reading through it slowly, trying to understand what I'm reading, uh, and I'm also watching anime without uh, 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 without subtitles with 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 the same purpose, trying to understand what they're saying, uh, yeah. and and that method will teach you in order of most common words because you're basically just just going to keep listening and and try to piece together what they're saying, and so you will hear the the, the most common words more often. Um, so yeah. It, it, uh, 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 it is a lot of fun, uh, as as you're saying, soccer. Um, 
one of the first things you, you'll pick up with Japanese is is dai, is daijobu and daijobu deska. Um, daijobu basically means, and I haven't really looked looked up this word too much. I just know know it from from context and, and stuff that I've read because um, it, it's one of the easier ones to learn. But daijobu would be essentially being okay. So da, da, daijobu deska is are you okay to which you might answer Dai, daijobu i'm fine kind of thing uh, if we're talking um, about learning stuff mm-hmm. i enjoy learning pointless words in english like <laughs> the, like my fate one of my favorite words in english is defenestration that's a great word. oh yes yes defenestration defenestration is a great word it's just a word that def- that just means to throw someone out of a window or to throw something <laughs> yeah. out of a window Yes. So, if you want a like, word that you almost will never get to use in your life, defenestration yeah. is great. Another yeah. word that I love is hippomonstrosis crypidaliophobia. It's a great word. Yeah. Is it, isn't that the fear of big words? Yes. Hippomonstrosis crypidaliophobia, it means you have a fear of long words. And you have yep. to say it with the what, what I say, which is an incredibly long word. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I love learning these pointless words. I know, um, I know. It is it, it, it is a truly ironic word, Cherry. <laughs> uh, no, I am I am not going to invoke the wrath of the the Duolingo bird. I am avoiding Duolingo, um, mostly because from what I hear, it's actually boring. <laughs> um, I've heard, I've been I've seen people advise not to use Duolingo for yeah. Japanese. Yeah, so I am I am avoiding those language programs like. Uh, um, uh, Duolingo, uh, Rosetta Stone, and that's thing. I am avoiding those on purpose um, because I'm trying to focus on natural language acquisition rather than uh, rather than memorizing um, specific words. Okay, I'm going to bring um, this point up quickly and so, before, before we run out of time. Mm-hmm. The part of the reason you learn language that way is there's a popular psychological. It's it's a popular thing in psychology, talking about mm-hmm. type one and type two thinking. Mm-hmm. So type one thinking is your gut reaction, your immediate thinking. If I say to you two plus two, you guys can mm-hmm. immediately just enter in the answer as four. Mm-hmm. Um, but type two thinking is your hard, long thinking. It's slower, takes a lot more effort, but it's accurate. When mm-hmm. you're learning the language, a thing you have to be very careful of is if you study too much uh, with certain languages like Caleb was saying with Duolingo and all that type of stuff mm-hmm. you'll learn the language in a type 2 thinking mindset you'll be throwing the words into a mental translator to get out what mm-hmm. you need and it's it's not that you can't learn the language with with a type 2 mindset like like Duolingo and such, and such during that and, that, and that, that is actually helpful but ultimately you need to go from type 2 to type 1 so that it is um so that you you understand without having to think about it. Otherwise, you you're going to spend all your time thinking about what they're saying and not actually understanding what they're saying. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So because a type two understanding of a language would be if you give me a written sentence, I can sit there for five minutes, pass out pass out what all the words mean, and te- and then tell you what it means. But if I've learned and acquired the language type one, then I can. I can read that the same way that I read, I read English and go, oh, you, you're you're asking me if I had dinner today. Yeah, um, because if you look at a sentence in English, which is... Um, yeah, uh, now, language, now, now, you don't need to think about it. You just know what it Soko means. Soko is, is actually making a good point. Um, Duolingo doesn't do um, type 2 focus. They are doing a... Uh, I think it's a picture-based association method, right? So, so that is trying to build up type 1. It's just boring. They're just throwing things at you and not giving you context. Um, the purpose behind TPRS, when you're learning via stories and reading, um, is that is you're meant to be focusing on the story, not the language, and you will acquire the language naturally as you're trying to understand the story. Yeah. Um, so I've been reading a book called uh, Yotsuba, um, or actually Yotsuba To, which basically means means with Yotsuba. It's a slice of life manga. Um, and one of the words that I've learned from that, and also watching uh, My Hero Academia, is taskete. Uh, or the way that it was used in the book, taskete, taskete, which basically means help me. Um, um, 
Yeah, so to, help to, me to, or save me or, or or something like that. To go uh, on so to you will... thing with Duolingo. Duolingo is not mm-hmm. bad um, as a program by itself at all. I've just heard the problem you have with Duolingo the... is I've seen um, when I've looked at it for language studies, people say it does good for certain languages, but I know people were saying that the Japanese version of it has its problems. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I haven't looked look into it too much. The main thing with Duolingo and other things like that is that if you do not have something else to go with it to keep you motivated, you will get bored. And if you're getting bored, you aren't learning. Um, yeah. So I'm learning a whole lot more Japanese because watching the pictures of a little girl running away yelling, Taskete, uh, uh, um, wa, wo, can't pronounce it, wa, wa, uh, wa rui no hito um the those words always mess me up but uh uh wa rui no hito taskete ta- taskete you can pick up from context that that basically means bad person help me yeah um and in the context of the story she's bumped into her neighbor that she that she didn't know was her neighbor and is running away because the neighbor's trying to help her get home but she thinks that it, she thinks it's it's a stranger trying to catch her or something. Um, but what you're saying, what you're saying there, Sarko, with um, learning languages, that's why uh, one of the things that makes learning languages difficult. If both, if you're trying to learn a language and everyone already knows English, it's so easy to just drop back and just use English when you don't know what you're trying to say, mm-hmm. and that means you lose the whole point. The whole, you learn stuff by failing at it. When you mm-hmm. fail, when you're not sure what to say and you have to try and work it out, that's how you learn stuff. But if you can just drop back into going. Like you use it a bit, and then like I don't know how to say this, so I'm just going to drop back into English. Then you don't actually learn anything. Yeah, that that shortcut is is how you mess up your learning. So this is this is an, a very important proverb to keep in mind for all things, um, and that is that the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. Um, you you learn through failure, and so you should never be afraid of failure. Getting it wrong is 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 just a chance to learn how to do it right the next time. That's, um, that's a good, that's, that that's was a good the... place to close it up as well because I mean it just well yeah but... hour. Uh, well we are f- we have five minutes oh we um, have five minutes okay sweet I thought yeah. we had, I thought we were running out of time oh, no, we, we still we, are, we have but... five minutes yeah we have five minutes but um but yeah so if if the if the way that you learn is by making mistakes you shouldn't be afraid of of, of getting it wrong um so Albert Einstein when he fails to make a light bulb uh, what, what was it, a thousand times it's like i i didn't fail to make a light bulb i just learned a thousand different ways how not to make a light bulb yeah uh this applies into not just learning languages and inventions was it, was it, was it not einstein um am i getting mixed up with someone it's not einstein no. edison. Thomas edison edison okay yeah. thanks for yeah einstein was a lot einstein was way later than that but... i was making a point and it wasn't who made who made a light bulb so yeah um, but that, that applies to all things. Um, like if you're trying to learn, for example, what I'm learning is uh, a lot of artwork. Mm-hmm. The, the biggest way, the, the, the worst way to learn artwork is to avoid things you're unsure about. Mm-hmm. If you're unsure about something, you don't know how to do it. Do it anyway, fail over and over again, and you'll get it eventually. There's no, yeah, the, there's no shame in failing. It's all about the, being, uh, it's all about. The trying. best way to learn how to draw an eyeball is to, is to draw a thousand really ugly eyeballs. Exactly. There, there's a saying with um, artists that that every artist has ten thousand bad drawings in them that they need to get out. Mm-hmm. So to become a good artist, you have to work through ten thousand bad art, uh, drawings first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Albert Einstein so, did not so, make. So the light correction: bulb. Thomas Edison made the light bulb, not Albert Einstein. <laughs> Albert Einstein was E equals M- <laughs> MC squared. Yeah, Albert Einstein, uh, that's the equation from the energy to matter, right? That is, yeah, if you if you directly convert matter to energy, um, that is the amount of, of energy that you get. Yeah. Energy so, equals mass times the constant of the speed of light, I believe. Yeah, which, which, which isn't a constant, but that would take me way too long to talk about right now. Yeah. E um, equals like mass times the constant, uh, the speed of light squared mass times the speed of light squared which the, which since the speed of light is ridiculously high and you're going to square it you end up with a lot of energy yeah if you could theoretically turn like i don't know um like the eraser of a pencil into a full amount of energy it would be 
enough energy to how much would that be would it be enough energy you would you would you would make a crater out of your entire city yeah exactly from just a single uh, razor of a pencil base yeah. if you could if you could perfectly convert um the matter in an eraser on the back of a pencil to energy uh to direct energy you would just destroy your entire city well you you have just released more energy than the bombs dropped on on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah. Um, because a a nuclear explosion is harnessing some of that that e equals M C squared energy, but at a very very low rate, very very low. Yeah. But 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 that is where a lot of that force comes from. So. Uh, no one. Okay, people over at people talking about being bad at drawing in chat. The thing. Okay, people like to think that drawing is, is an inherent. Yeah. skill or it's something that you are born with or born without it is not it is a it is a skill you have to work at and learn it's, it's like learning math no one is born amazing at math they have to learn it there, there there's a phenomenon that it's called i forget what it's called now but there's essentially a um there's a bell curve that you kind of follow as you as you get good at something someone who knows very very little about something and, uh, and such thinks they are that Thinks they know more than they do. It is called the and Dunning then, Kruger effect, is what you're okay. The, to. Okay, so the 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 Dunning Kruger effect is um, is that when you know very little very little about a topic, as you start start to learn more, you feel like you know everything. Then you learn a bit more, and you realize how how much you don't know, and so you feel like I know nothing, even though that you know more than most. So. And th and, and then only when you get truly good at something do you maybe start to feel like you know something about know something about the topic, but you might still feel like you don't know anything. Here, here That's kind is of a, where the uh, here's a good yeah. diagram of it. You have you'll, the peak you'll, of you'll Mount Stupid, on the, video. the Valley yeah. of Despair, the Slope of Enlightenment, and then the Plateau of, sense of Sustainability. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so the, oh, I'm gonna I can throw this onto onto the this this, for a this peak of Mount Stupid is exactly why people get frustrated with talking to people who have been studying something for about a week. Like you are you are at the peak of Mount Stupid and you have no idea how much you don't know. Um. Oh, okay. I tried to mess with my display capture, but the settings are done really weirdly and I can't do yeah. it easily. But so. Talking more about the peak of Mount Stupid can be our, our topic for next week, um, but we are currently out of time. So, yep. Tangent Tuesday is is coming to a close. Thank you all for being here. Um, we, we will be doing this every week from now on. Um, I'm going to aim for 3 p.m. on Game Academy. I'm working on yeah, that now. So, so, so it's, a, it's a Game Academy show, and we'll be doing this probably 3 p.m. every Tuesday. Um, and we'll have it on YouTube when we get it working because YouTube is being a pain. So thank you all for coming. We will end on the peak of Mount Stupid. And, um, and uh, yeah, don't. Okay. What was that? What don't was... be afraid of failure and keep going because you'll probably realize how much you don't know. And then you'll learn truly what there is to find. Okay. Yeah. That's a good place to end it. Right. Yep. See you See next you. week.